What are you doing here? Please stand. Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Our triumphant holy day. Hallelujah. Who did once upon the cross? Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. sins to the Lord. Merciful God, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. But what I have done, and by what I have left undone, I have not loved you with my whole heart, and mind, and strength. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. In your mercy, forgive what I have been 
Help me amend what I am, and direct me to what I shall be, so that I may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. In the name of, and because of the finished work of our crucified and risen Savior, I forgive you all of your sins. In Christ, crucified and risen, you are forgiven. In Christ, crucified and risen, you are a new creation. Amen. pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised to life with Christ through baptism, may walk in newness of life and always rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The faith of our fathers, our faith, and those to come in this life who believe in Jesus Christ, the only Savior, have founded that faith 
on his death and resurrection. Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. We join together singing the chorus of Psalm 118 and reading the verses responsively. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live. And will proclaim what the Lord has done. This is the day. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us Our hope, our faith, means Jesus has reversed everything for you. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all will die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ, the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel, Mark 16, verses 1 through 7. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, 
bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that, stone, that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen, and he is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. He is not here. He is risen. See the tomb is empty where he lay. He is not here. He is risen. Jesus rose on Easter day. Alleluia. You may be seated. We'll join together confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I invite the children of the congregation to come forward at this time. Take a seat over here, Lucas. Shire can come over here. Find a seat. You can find a seat, guys. Right there, there's two spots. Squeeze in. Go ahead, squeeze in, buddy. Were you listening to the gospel lesson, the good news about Jesus this morning? Who was there? when those women went to the tomb? Um. Mm. Tick tock. An angel, you got it right on the first time. I thought you might say Mary, or Mary Magdalene, or other women, but who was there? An angel was there, that's not normal. When's the last time mom and dad said, go up, brush your teeth, and go to bed, and you went into your room and there was an angel there? Has that ever happened? No. Something always special happens when we see angels in the Bible. Can you think of another time an angel was there? You guys are 100% on my questions today. You know why? Because I wanted to point out that event and draw a tie between Jesus coming to this earth and on Friday, yes, on Friday we saw Jesus giving up his life for us on the cross and now we see another angel Every time God wants to say in a very important message, he sends a messenger, an angel, and they always serve us. Now, a lot of people think that when you die, you turn into an angel, but that's not true. Angels are God's servants for you and for me. And when he's going to do something very special, like send the Son of God into human flesh, who does he send? An angel to announce it. Oh, the Savior is here. We celebrate it at Christmas. And now today, on this day of Easter, who does he send again? An angel. 
an angel to provide a message so important because he lives, Jesus lives, we also will live forever and ever. Jesus completed his message. So listen to the angel's word as you grow in your faith and you learn more about your Savior because they always have a special message that God wants you to know at the very core of your heart. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Can you say it? I'll say he is risen. He is risen. You say he is risen indeed. You guys don't get this at all. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen indeed. Almost. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay, it was weak, but you can go back to your seats. Thank you. <laughs> We'll sing this joyful Easter tide. Easter celebration of he is risen. Dear friends in Christ, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. I'm not a big fan of Easter sunrise service. It's not because I don't get up early enough. It's because it takes me three or four cups of coffee to get my brain moving in the morning. That thought of Easter sunrise, though very popular throughout the world of Christianity, is, is not something I'd like to do, but it's interesting how people celebrate it. Some celebrate it in a park, right? Some 
go to a cemetery and celebrate it there. And I'm sure even at 540, more or less, when lights started coming up this morning, there are those people out there, especially in Carlsbad, a dog city of the world, a pet dog city of the world. There are people out there walking their dogs. And as I prepared this sermon, I thought, what would those passerby, those who think Easter Sunday is like no other day, other than for bunnies and Easter egg hunts, what would they be thinking? What would they be experiencing about us as a group if we were down on the beach, if we were out in a park, if we were at a cemetery and they were to pass by? What is it that defines this group of Christians here in Carlsbad, California as something distinct or unique? What would they hear Our text is from Romans chapter 4. I'll read it again. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Justification. God's declaration of innocence. You are justified because... Christ was raised from the dead. And you lay hold to that. That's the pinnacle of your faith. In fact, for 2,000 years, as Christians, we've been saying, this is the highest day in all the year as we celebrate our Savior and what he has done for us. This is the point we focus on because it's God's proof that he justified us, that he declares us innocent in his sight and that's a reason to celebrate that's why your ribbons went from black to white truly Paul's words to us are his Easter declaration to you of your innocence in the sight of a holy God that's a thing to celebrate what is this faith so now as we take that verse 25 of Romans, let's go back and see what Paul was talking about beforehand. He links this faith that you and I now have as the universal faith for all time. And he gives the example of Father Abraham. He's talking to Jews and Greeks, so at least the Jews would know who Abraham is. He was the one that initiated our whole culture and people. The chosen people through whom the Savior would become. And Abraham had a faith that connected him to the same Savior that you and I celebrate today. Oh, what a faith he had. 75 years old. And God comes to him and says, it's time for you to leave your fatherland. You know this place where you've put down your roots? You have your family, you're connected to one another. Every opportunity you can, you come together and enjoy your family. You celebrate to one another birthdays, I'm sure. You grieve with one another at funerals. The high points in life and the low points in life. Your family is right there and God intercedes and says at 75, pick up and leave. And Abraham's reaction, he took God at his word. He just simply said, you told me this, I'll take you at your word. So he moves himself to the land the Lord had directed him. And in that same year of 75, Abraham's faith was put to a test again. At this time known as Abram, he said, through you, all people of the earth will be blessed. Well, how can that be? I'm 75, my wife's 65. That makes no human sense. That's beyond human reason. And yet... What do we see of Abraham? He takes God at his word and believes it. 
Fast forward 24 years. Now Abraham is 99. And God changes his name from Abram to Abraham, stressing again that all nations, including the United States, including Carlsbad, California, even this wacky world in which we live that's so materialistic and so unspiritual, all nations would be blessed through the one that would come from you. Abraham believed and we're told it was credited to him as righteousness, Paul tells us. That he was righteous because of his simple faith. Once again, what did he do? He took God at his word. His spouse, not so much, being 90. She said, oh, this is ridiculous. And what, did, what was her reaction Simply to laugh and scoff. Faith takes God at his word. And look how that has developed throughout history. Remember those disciples? Simple fishermen standing on the seashore and the powerful word of God calls them to faith. Two words. Two words. Jesus' contemporaries. He says to them, follow me. And the word made flesh through the power of his word. Those fishermen dropped their livelihood in the form of nets. And followed their Savior because faith takes God at its word. And so we sit here 2,000 years later. From generation to generation, these simple truths of Scripture that proclaim Christ crucified for you come and rest in your lap this morning. God's declaration for you. God's Easter declaration is summed up in these words of Paul. Faith takes God at its word, people. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. There's two planks that those people hopefully would see as we worship in public. Many, many people today see Jesus as a great moral teacher. There, there are probably very few people in this world that are skeptical that Jesus ever lived. I think history has been pretty clear about that. You would find the most denying person of Jesus' importance saying, well, he truly was a human that lived and walked on this earth. And you would find another segment of our population who would say, what a great man. What a great man, because he saw the needs of those who were downtrodden and hurt. All of his healings, if he did them, maybe he was a physician, if I deny his miracles or his status as truly being God. But what a great man. He cared so much. He gave of himself. And he, he truly did have tremendous teachings about how we should live with one another in society. But if it stops there, they don't know the real Jesus. He was delivered over death for our sins. See, Abraham had plenty of sins to repent of. And so did Peter, impetuous Peter, as he denied his Lord in the courtyard. And so do we. Every misstep, every malspoken word, every evil thought, every lustful desire of our heart, and yes, even yes, our envy, God sees. But we have the authentic Jesus. We know him by faith because faith 
takes God at its word. And the piercing of the word of God shows us for exactly who we are. Sinners who are unable to save ourselves, but take heart. He was delivered over to death for our sins. The whole purpose of Easter Sunday, the whole joy and celebration that we have, there's no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. Because he there eliminated our debt of sin before God. He was delivered over to that death, not for his, but for our sin. But was raised to life for our justification. So God declares us innocent. There's a troubling word in this text. That word for. And it gives the idea of for our benefit as we hear it. A likely better translation, in my opinion, and completely valid, is he was raised to life because of our justification. Because God declared you innocent, he was raised to life. What we celebrate in his declaration of Easter today is God's stamp of approval on what Christ has done because he declared you innocent in his sight. Jesus was raised because you are innocent. And the benefits extend for eternity. Friends, faith takes God at his word. Now if we were gathered in a park in a cemetery, on the beach. Oh, I hope that true Jesus would be seen. Those two planks of who he is, what he does, and how you benefit, that they too would know the peace that you know. That peace that surpasses all human understanding. That faith that they got, that faith that takes God at his word. That's God's Easter declaration to you. Amen and hallelujah. We join together in singing the next hymn.
hung his head and prepared to die Then lifted his face up to the sky Said I stand for prayer. Blessed Savior, this morning we have again heard the story of your glorious resurrection from the grave, and with that your triumph over sin, death, and hell. In all of this, you were our divine substitute. The battle you fought was our battle. The victory you won is our victory. Because you rose from the grave, we know that all our sins have been paid for in full. You have set us free. You have removed the burden of guilt and the fear of punishment from our lives. Because you rose in glory from the grave, we know that all believers will also be raised on the last day with glorified bodies. Until that day, while we are still here on this earth, Help us always to remember who we are, children of God, raised to new spiritual life through faith in you who died and rose for us. 
Keep us from sin in every shape and form. Direct our lives by your holy commandments. Fill us with love for you and love for our neighbor. We commit to your care, loving Lord, all who are hurting in body and soul or spirit. Give strength to the weak, courage to the fearful, certainty to the complex, perplexed, and trust to the doubting. Assure us in all that we have for body and life. And finally, when that great final day of the resurrection comes and you return to raise all the dead, take us to the heavenly mansions which you have prepared for all believers where we forever will shine with your glory. Hear us, Lord. I am resurrection. Amen. We join in the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in the peace of Easter joy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the closing hymn. Happy Easter to all of you. My prayer is that the risen Lord appeared to you through his word this morning, that all may be blessed by faith that takes God at his word. 
This morning we will have an Easter brunch if you'd like to make your way down to the grassy knoll as it's come to be known uh, this morning. And also there will be an egg hunt for the children as is pretty typical on Easter Sundays. Um, Welcome to our visitors. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You're always welcome here. At this time, um, I invite you to join uh, together in a table prayer, even though it, it, it will last for 20 minutes until we start eating, okay? But uh, I will say a prayer and I'll invite you to join in the common table prayer. Be present at our table, Lord. Your people bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. God's blessings. Mm -hmm. 